In the middle of Isla Vista, 20 years ago, God planted a seed. That seed is known as Jesus Burgers. Jesus Burgers wasn't just the start of a ministry. It became the start of a church, a place with over 25,000 college students within a one mile radius of each other. God chose this church to be the light and hope of this town. This is not just a moment, a documentary, or even a story. This is a movement. This was and is the story of Isla Vista Church. Our part to play in all of this is to encapsulate hope and really love those we were called to love, our neighbors, each other. And so there we were, sent to capture the incredible story of Isla Vista Church and the Jesus Burgers ministry. We witnessed, we worshiped, and now here we are, embarking on that same journey. Welcome to our story. Man, when we first started, I mean, we got pushback. We got opposition, we got minor persecution. I mean, people were angry at us, some of them, not all of them, they're like, what the F are you doing out here? Like, why are you guys here? Why is Christians on Del Playa, you know? like People were like, why the you coming at me, bro? Like, why do you want to give me a burger? What is it, poisoned? Like, what are you trying to do? Like, what are you trying to do to me? Like, it was a really, like, hostile environment. What's, are these, are these hamburgers poisoned? You know, it's like, bro, we're just out here trying to love you. <laughs> like, we're not trying to do anything but just, like, give you God's love. You know, I think if you're judgmental, it's like, you, you might want to go read Romans again. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not really about us being all holier than thou. It's like, it's all about Jesus empowering us, you know. We need Jesus just as much as everyone. CSO 50 on PD1, we're... Over 20 years, you know, you've seen a lot of things and it's funny, I often feel like the dichotomy of some things never change and yet everything's always changing. I think though at the beginning things were probably felt a little darker. So I feel like in the last couple of years things have just mellowed out a lot. Night and day. I mean the spiritual atmosphere is night and day. It's incredible to see how God has pushed out darkness and released light. The city that we're in now has never been more open to God, has never been more receptive to His love. People flock to our house because they love what they're experiencing there. All right, I'm gonna go get some water. There we go, all right, all right. <laughs> Going to whisper little secrets into the mic. I wonder what sort of audience this is. Oh, there goes all the oatmeal. Uh, we get some water for our new friends. No 
I graduated in May of 2014, and I prayed and told God, I have nothing on my schedule for the rest of my life, so past August, you can do whatever you want with my life and my time, because after that, my calendar is literally open. And that's what the song 814 is about, August of 2014, a song about surrender. Um, I give you my all. I lived out here without community for six months. I was looking for my family, and I was like, where are the people in California who believe that God is here, who believe that He's present, that He wants to do things, who believe in the Holy Spirit and, and all the gifts and the fruits that He brings. And everybody who I had met up until that point didn't really have that relationship with the Holy Spirit. So I started going down to a church in San Diego called Glory Mountain. My best friend said, bro, you live in Santa Barbara, you should go check out Jesus Burgers. Up until this point, I had no idea. I was like, what, what is Jesus Burgers? I've never heard those two words put together. Then I walk into that room at Jesus Burgers. They were having a little Bible study worship night. And everybody was praying over one another and speaking prophetic words over one another and loving on one another. And everything about it, I was like, this is my tribe. I found it. I give you my all. So I started um, going to college on the East Coast at a Christian school called Liberty University. While I was there, I was offered a lot of um, just neat opportunities to work with different churches, organizations, and they were all amazing, but I just kept thinking like the whole time, and there's gotta be like a place out there that really is just so focused on community and like kindness and like loving people well and just having patience and like I loved the structure and everything but I just knew it wasn't right for me and so I started asking God like a year ago, a little over a year ago, where do you want me, like what's next? And he gave me this vision or like a picture of the beach of Isla Vista and I just remember thinking, okay, this is California, like I know it. And then I just sort of sat with that, had peace with it. And then my pastor's wife came out here three months after that happened and interned with our church. And she called me one day and just asked me to share my heart for like life and people. And I start sharing with her and she goes, okay, I think Isla Vista is like the place you need to be. And so I pull up the website and I look at all the different internship tracks. And then I see Jesus Burgers and I was like, that's it. Like it just clicked in my heart. And that sort of just began the process of me coming here. So, I think specifically uh, what I love about Jesus Burgers and the reason why I wanted to, to hop in is that here at Jesus Burgers we're actually doing the Great Commission. Um, we're actually praying for the sick, we're actually sharing the gospel, we're practically loving people, we're actually doing it. Um, and there aren't a lot of places or environments where there is a community of people who are actually pursuing the Great Commission, you know, but here we get to do it on a Friday, and I love that. Hey everybody, I'm Jason Lomolino, the lead pastor of Isla Vista Church associated with Jesus Burgers. I was actually the founder of Jesus Burgers. I started it in 2001 with a simple heart just to love this city. I got radically arrested by the love of God and uh, just had a wild idea, let's just do a citywide barbecue. And so we just started cooking up hamburgers way back over there, Nether Street. And a group of us would come to Del Playa and we would just jump into groups and ask people, what do you think about Jesus? <laughs> I used to see people who partied as evil individuals who were just degenerates and rebellious and just awful. And being here on Del Playa, I, I see them as people, you know, just just the loss. It's just kids want to have fun and find true joy and true peace. And we know that we can only find that through Jesus. But you realize, like these are just these are just kids. Um, I didn't really realize that before. I think also it's given me more um, just empathy, I guess, a little bit more acceptance. Um, you have to be accepting. You can't really. You can't thrive in Isla Vista and be judgmental because if you're a judgmental person, you, there's too much to, to judge. You're just gonna be miserable and it's just not gonna be a good time. Well, what are you doing? Uh, we get some water for our new friends. Here you go, got some water for you. 
You got it? Yeah. You sure? Oh. oh. <laughs> there we go. That night, I actually led someone to the Lord for the first time. And it changed my life. And I, I found out that evangelism was actually easy. And I was like, oh, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Do you feel like that was like a turning point in your life? Like it was, because I came here and I was like, wow, I really feel like I belong here. Like, I feel like this is like what I was created for. Being here is really just like, we're full-time missionaries and we're living for the Lord and we're believing that Isla Vista will be saved through Jesus Burgers and through what we're doing. And we're believing that like, all the people here who are partying and doing drugs and having one night stands and all of, all of the stuff that's just, just so hard and like people, think so negatively about like the people who are our neighbors like they're actually just like sons and daughters who just don't know who their father is and they're actually just crying out to be loved and they're all of it is just an expression of how not realizing how loved they are and just experiencing disconnection from the Lord and so we're here just to to give away free burgers and to love people but we're here to show them like there's a God out there that loves you and his name's Jesus and he changed our lives, and we were just as bound to darkness as you were, but we experienced the love of Christ, and now we're brand new. We're way different. Hey guys, what's up? My name's Sarah Jers, and I'm at the Isla Vista Jesus Burgers house. These people are the bomb.com. So, check them out. I know this time I spent here is only temporary so i will trust in you god go down these roads are scary live life love god think twice don't go on your own understanding cause god is chilling in the sky behold the beauty of our king gotta let go no you gotta let go gotta let go no you gotta let go gotta let go no you gotta let go gotta let go and let god take control My name is Jairo Medina. I'm just the house dad of Jesus Burgers. I was really culture shocked at first. I was like, this is not for me. Isla Vista has a thing of sucking you into itself. Even though you can be the most like quiet, like not partying person. 2015 was when I first started coming that I didn't really know what it was, but I showed up here and I was just really impacted by the way people were reached every Friday night. That's where I wanted to be. I was like, I need to go to Jesus Burgers because people are getting encountered by the love of God radically there and I don't want to miss out on that. So I would come every Friday night and always be at the free blessing sign. And so when I graduated, I had no idea what I was going to do. I was like, God, what? Am I gonna go to the nations or what am I gonna do? He made it very obvious that this is where he wanted me and I didn't really want to do it because I thought it was gonna be uncomfortable. I was like, I'm in the middle of the party street. The one street that my freshman year I said I was never gonna live on. Even one of my friends who lives here now, she had a dream of the Lord with a hand trying to guide me. And it was exactly, she texted me exactly when I was praying about living at the house. And she was like, Hiro, I see the Lord like with his hand trying to lead you into a place but you're being hesitant to do it. And I was like, ah. Oh. So I mean, long story short, I ended up saying yes to the house and it happened super quickly. I signed, you know, the, the lease for the house and here I am. This is my third year at the house and I'm so excited for what the Lord's gonna do this year. Something's shifting around, but it's gonna be really good. In this room, just you and me. There's no place that I'd rather be. In your presence I am. So my name is Jonathan Kim, and I currently live at the Jesus house. You know, what really stands out to me um, in this community in particular is, you know, there's, there's a lot of emphases about the family of God, you know, like the family of Christ, the body of Christ. You know, they do family so well, like more than any other place. And I think 
a large part of it is because you know we live together and i think that plays such a huge role in why we're able to love jesus in such a consistent way and why people feel so connected with the vision and the goal for this community you know to see isla vista like come to know jesus is because we live together, you know, and like as opposed to what I understood to be the form of Christianity and the form of church back home for me, you know, you just show up on Sundays and then you just go home. You don't know their history with Jesus at all, you know, for I don't know who the person on the left of me or the right of me, you know, I may come with one or two people, but apart from that, like I know the pastor, you know, but I don't know the congregation. And I think what really stands out here is I love Vista Church and, you know, what this community holds is such this deep, connected love for one another, you know, and I, th I think living together really, it sounds simple, but I really think that plays a huge part. I can't get away, you can't get away, you got people that'll tell you about the other day, please get out my way, you know I can't stay, let the past be the past, I don't really got time to be reminded, see, I try but you can't Lie to me, no way The past can't come with me The past can't come with me, no Check it out guys, uh, Sam here from Gifted Live I just want to say what's up uh, We actually came back out to Isla Vista um, Hung out with the Jesus Burger people one more time And uh, really just came out here to witness what it was like in full throttle um, Just with all the college students out here from UCSB And uh, just really seeing what God is doing through their Jesus Burger movement. It is the hottest spot on the block, so if you come out to Isla Vista, you know where to go. Jesus Burgers, Del Playa Drive. And uh, Gifted had the pleasure of just being witness to it. Be my melody, I can't wait, cause I was meant to be great. I was meant to be great, no, no. I got in this for Jesus and nothing else. It wasn't a church I was trying to start. It wasn't a ministry I was trying to start. I literally fell in love with this man that loved everyone, that judged no one. And I think the more that we stare at him, the more that we fall in love with him, we become more and more like him. And so we never want to divert from that mission of just staring at Jesus, you know, gazing upon the beauty of God. And out of that place, it's just like, man, why would you want to just come down hard on people when Jesus never came hard on me? My hope for Isla Vista is that literally just all of, all of Isla Vista knows that God is for them, that God loves them, that through Christ they've been reconciled through God. The testimony for Isla Vista will forever be the faithfulness of Jesus. You know, not our own faithfulness, not what we can do, not what we can muster up, but His faithfulness to that city and His heart and His purposes. And that's why we're there. We're there to establish the kingdom of God in Isla Vista. They'll know you're Christians by your love for one another and just kind of this idea that when the church started to live the way he intended his body to live and operate that the world couldn't help but see who he really was and what he was like and that they would want to know him. Beyond all the sex, alcohol, drugs, that his love is more fulfilling, more real than all that, then his name would be glorified through, through all of that. through a university, all, we have people from all over the world. Over 60 nations are in Isla Vista, it's insane. Like, you don't gotta leave to get the nations that are actually coming to us because of the university. Like you don't move into the house to be a lone wolf. You know, you're moving into the house to be a part of something much bigger than that. You know, it's not about yourself, you know. My hope for Isla Vista is that the 18 to 21 year olds that live here would realize and see that, that Jesus loves them so much more than what they could have ever imagined and that he doesn't see their sins, but he sees them as, as children. So when people come here, I want them to to experience that, to experience an actual transformation in their heart, in their lifestyle, in the way that they think, the way that they feel, and they would know that it's from God, it's not something that they did. And that I hope that people would have courage not to be afraid of what people think, um, that you can pray for the sick with a heart of love, even if it's uncomfortable, 
you can approach things in a way where people still feel loved and you know you can respect someone's boundaries if they don't want to be prayed for you know what I mean and it's not our job to like shame people or throw that at them like if that's how God created people then he's already working in their life and we just get to call it out of them and so there's not this entitlement or this pride or this need to like go save people and tell them like what's wrong with their life. Like we know if they're made in God's image, then God's pursuing them. And we just get to call that out and partner with it and plant more seeds. And like over time through God's kindness and just meeting him over and over and again, like we get breakthrough from our crap and like pride, pride just falls and like control and shame just falls. And I think that's why it's so different here is because we, we know that God's pursuing everyone in the city. We just get to partner with him in that. And it really it's just it makes it so much more simple and it really just resembles like the heart of who Jesus was. Waiting in the quiet place Longing for your grace Lord, I look to you Faithful to reveal your heart from the very start. I was meant for you. I am waiting in the quiet place, longing for embrace. Lord, I look to you. You're faithful to reveal your heart from the very start. I was meant for you Oh You opened up the heavens You ain't down your left Oh Father, my heart is toward you You're more than enough I am resting In your love for me Open up and see